What up, world? It's your boy, Sporty Black, checking in again, man. Shout out to the notification squad. We in the building, man. Uh, talking about that boy, Takashi 69 man. Um, whew, they got a lot going on, man. I'm talking about, man, these folk pointing the finger at each other. They rolling over on each other. They snitching like it going out of style. And basically what they saying now, Takashi, you know what I'm saying, he trying to save his own ass. And uh, he cooperating with the feds. And um, it was a shooting attempt against Chief Keith a few months ago, if y'all can recall, when Chief Keith came to New York. They were around the time him and um, Takashi were beefing and shit. So he, they saying Takashi paid this dude named Kuda B, his partner, 10000 10, you know what I'm saying, to shoot Chief Keith. They saying, buddy tried to shoot him, but he missed. So, you know what I'm saying? So now they saying, goddamn, uh, Takashi basically uh, told the folks who the trigger man was. So now the, the ATF then came and snatched up Kuda B Ave and locked them up for it. So it just ain't looking good. And, you know, I've been trying to follow this case as much as I can, but it's like every time some reports come out about the case, it's about somebody snitching on the other person. And now the thing about that is this. Anytime you dealing with a, a, a situation where you got multiple co-defendants, man, it's hard, man. It's, it's hard for everybody to stay solid, man. Now, if you're dealing with just you and one other person, then it's, it's, it's a little more easier because it's all about communication. You and that person find a story, stick to the story, no matter what, and just stay down. But when you got four, five different uh, code of finish, man, it's hard, man, because once that uh, it's so many different people in their ear, and then these these um these investigators and stuff like that do come in and interrogate these guys, they go to talking to them and running all kind of game on them and telling them what kind of time they facing, you know what I'm saying? And some niggas ain't equipped for that, man. You see it all the time when you watch first 48 how quick them nigga be folding on each other. And it's the same thing, man, in real life. You know what I'm saying? It's like, it is just how it go, man. Everybody just get selfish and go to thinking about their self from an individual standpoint. So go to thinking about the kids they got, um, what they're going to be missing if they get locked up for all this amount of time. And then them white folk be talking them crazy book rods and normal stuff, life in 40, uh, uh, life without... 50 years with 30 years concurrent. You know what I'm saying? So it's like them numbers like that. You like, bro, I ain't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I ain't going to never get out. So when they go to talking like that, man, it take that one nigga to start talking. And once that one nigga start talking, the next man going to start talking. So if it's five, six of y'all, two, three of y'all start talking, it get ugly then, you know what I'm saying? Because... The, the one or two people who trying to just stay solid to the story and, you know what I'm saying, just stay trill and let their lawyers work. But their lawyers steady coming back, showing them the paperwork, what they co defendant saying. You know what I'm saying? So just imagine you locked up for something and the shit you locked up for deep down. You know you did this shit. You know what I'm saying? But you trying to figure out a way to beat it. But boom, you already incarcerated for this, waiting to go to trial. Then you got four or five co defendants and then your lawyer letting you read the statements that they saying to the investigator and they, and they implement and implicating you in these crimes. So now your lawyer being real with you like, bro, it ain't looking good for you, man. You go to trial, man, you might not win. And you go to trial, you know, they go go and throw the whole book at you. You know what I'm saying? So now you like, damn. So now your lawyer on some shit like, bad thing, what to do to try to get us a plea? You know what I'm saying? So. Man, that shit, it's a due process, man. I done been through that shit a thousand times. You know what I'm saying? Just as a juvenile, you know, in and out of court, in and out the system, you know what I'm saying? Dealing with case after case, multiple co-defendants. And I just, you know, I I came to realize, you know what I'm saying, that the best way to do shit, man, is do it by your damn self. You know what I mean? Because once you go to dealing with a bunch of niggas, man, niggas is not going to keep it silent, man. Everybody hollering. Gang, gang, trayway there, trayway there. That shit be cool when you out. You know what I'm saying? You get money, rock and show, fucking hole, and all that right there, balling. 
But when that when that real pressure come, you get locked up, and the white folk put you behind them bars and go to talking them numbers. You know what I'm saying? Talking about how long you finna be locked up, man. But nigga go to folding so quick. But nigga go to folding quick. And that's what's going on in this situation right here, man. Every time I look up, it's a, a, another individual snitching. They snitching on each other, man. That's just what's going on. And then 6 9 you know, he got the most to lose out of the situation because, you know what I'm saying, he had restart status with the music. So he got his lawyers and his team telling the, uh, the judge them, like, he ain't no gang member for real. He was just, um, it was all a facade to help, you know what I'm saying, his image with the rapping. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's a good lie. That's a good excuse to kick to them folk. But, man, them folks ain't dumb, man. Them folk know what the hell going on. Just like them tattoos, they go examine them tats. And they know what gang tattoos and all this look like. So, if you got any of that shit tatted on you, man, they going off of them tattoos and whatever you been posting. And if they, whatever you've been posting reflect what you got on your tattoos and what these people saying in the street, but that's what it is. You know what I'm saying? So I say all that just to say, man, it's not really looking good at all for 6 9 them, man. And, um, man, I really hate that. I really wish, you know what I'm saying, honestly, I wish 6 9 would have just, you know, stayed solid. You know what I'm saying? Don't choose to go the rat, uh, route because... You got to look at somebody like Bobby Smyrna. He got caught up in a similar situation with multiple uh, co-defendants. You know what I'm saying? But Bobby Smyrna, he stayed down. He stayed solid. You know what I'm saying? He ain't telling nobody. He ain't roll over. He just stayed always down with his story. And boom, look. He done did a few years, but shit, he get out next year. And when he get out, the whole world going to brace him for being a, a stand-up nigga. You know what I'm saying? So he can get right back out here. And resume to the bag. Niggas go show them love. They go put them on. But once you go in there on some rat shit and you get out, well, if you make it out, because once you in there and you labeled as a rat, it's a uh, it's highly probable that you won't even make it out of prison. Cause niggas niggas ain't even finna tolerate that nigga be trying to put hits on you while you're in there. Nigga trying to stab you while you're in there and all that right there. And then it fuck up your street cred. So when you come home. Niggas ain't got no love for you, dog, because you a rat. That's your label. So, you know what I'm saying? It really career ending. So, you know, it got to be real crucial as far as the evidence and the time they trying to get 6 9 for him to result to telling on that man, bro. Them folk must really, really, really got some shit on them boys, and they trying to take him out of the street forever for him to result to ratting because he got to know, man, if you, you man, come on, bro, that. There ain't no coming back from that. You know what I'm saying? They're like career suicide. So, I don't know, man. I'm sporting black, though. If you're new to the channel, hit that sub button, man. What I need y'all to do out there, man. Y'all let me know what y'all think about this whole situation. Are you surprised that, um, they say 6 9 you know, I'm pretty much told on cool to be and pretty much going the route um, way, you know what I mean? Instead of trade way, you're going the rat way. You know what I mean? About this whole situation. So, y'all just let me know what y'all think about this shit, man. Y'all tell me, man. I want to know. <laughs> you feel me? Anybody on here from New York, man. If you from New York, please hit that comment section. Let me know what the hell going on, man. What's up, man? But, uh, that's pretty much all I got, man. Stay tuned for more content, man. I'm Sporty Black. I'm signing out, man. Y'all help me get the 5K, too, man.